So this video, I'm doing a quick review and reflection of 2018. So I wasn't actually going to do a video today since I just released another video, my vlog of Newcastle and Little Mini Guide. But I thought because it's the end of the year, 2018, I might as well take a moment and reflect and sort of like take a and, and just take a moment to be grateful what I've managed to achieve this year and just look back at some of the goals I've I've had since the beginning of this year. Number one, to take my videography business a lot more seriously. Uh, for the past couple of years I've been building towards my own video production business and it's definitely been progressing quite nicely this year. And my second goal was to be more of a travel documentarian over the longer term. Now that goal is more of a medium or longer term goal and I guess one of the things about being a travel documentarian is to meet more people and learn and understand another important lesson and that is learning how to tell stories. And the third goal is to actually engage with the greater community. So let's just quickly go through those three goals and just what's been happening. But before I go into all that details, um, I did actually have somebody ask me why do I have a, a channel, a travel channel, um, This World World. And actually the reason why This World World exists is because, well initially it was just a way for me to capture so in my memories, I realised since I've been travelling, I've been to almost 50 countries now. And for me, travel is all about experiences and memories. And I would like to reflect in 30 years time and just look back and see some of the things I've actually done when I've travelled. Unfortunately, quite a few of the, my stories that I've had since I first started travelling, my first like you know, half a dozen countries, those memories have sort of like disappeared. And I've still got random photos here and there, but every once in a while when I do look back at it, I'm not too sure exactly where or what I did meeting these people. So I'm gonna try and capture those moments and like put it onto a channel just so that I can look back and literally say, I did lead, lead a very, very good life. And the second reason is that, is that I actually really enjoy helping other people to travel better. And actually one of the videos that did surprisingly well was my Trans-Siberian video from last year. So I'm definitely gonna do more of those type of videos in the coming year. So one of the main reasons for me becoming a freelance videographer is obviously I need to get paid to do stuff and why not be a career? I used to be a software developer and since I've sort of changed my course from that, maybe not strictly related to this channel, but I feel that if I can get mix my love of travel and my big interest in video, it's been an interesting journey to get to this point to be a freelance video guy. And uh, at the beginning, it's pretty damn hard, like just getting the clients, getting the right equipment and making sure I've got enough money to um, pay my way through month to month and to fund my different types of journeys. This year has been really good, actually. Some of the projects I've actually done, not strictly related to this channel, um, video wise, it's been great. I think one of my highlights is actually going to Amsterdam and a friend was actually organising a developers conference and I had a chance to go to Amsterdam. In fact, I've been going to Amsterdam and the Netherlands in general quite a bit this year. Not that I'm complaining, I do have a big love for the Dutch. And covering that developer conference has made me really, really, made me realise that I actually really love telling stories. I love the idea of taking potentially what would be a boring subject and actually making the actual developers come to life. And it's been absolutely amazing um, going through that process. I'm hoping next year I'll be doing more of that type of stuff. And yeah, yeah, I'm really like rearing to go for that type of thing. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Going back to my goal of being a better travel documentarian, best, a better storyteller. Um, actually, this year has been that year where I've been taking, taking a big, deep, deep dive into storytelling and trying to understand it in an intricate level. Been doing lots of reading and actually... It's just a really good excuse to watch more YouTube videos and just comparing the different ways that people tell stories, especially other travel YouTubers looking at travel videos and travel films. This year has made me definitely realise how much I'm starting to love storytelling and over the longer term, I'm definitely going to try and become a better storyteller because I feel that's the only way to really go to the next level. I think one of the biggest highlights of being a travel documentarian, travel storyteller, was actually when I showed a special cut of uh, Nora's uh, Life Ain't Fun Without Detours um, short film. I think it's only five minutes, you should definitely check it out. Uh, there's a link just here. It tells a story about Nora who travelled from all the way to, from her home country the Netherlands all the way to Bali by herself solo over 11 months on a motorcycle. For the last 14 months I rode from Amsterdam to Bali alone. I'm king of the road, I am king of the road. I had gotten my motorcycle license a year before, but I'd never left the Netherlands on my bike. I'd never ridden off-road on my bike. Music is my money and my story will be told. The 
Life is like a sound that makes us all together bound. Let it out. I had a chance to show it at Traverse. Traverse is actually a company that specialises in helping travel influencers, uh, mainly bloggers at the moment. Um, I think when I went to Traverse, it was like 18, 90% bloggers. It's been, it was such an eye opener. I felt so inspired. The video is still relatively new in the travel space for for travel bloggers. So to actually see more and more of that coming actually for the travel bloggers who are very established. It can only be a good thing. I, I'm all up for more diversity in travel videos um, and also just like pushing up that age range a little bit. Old buggers like me can have to actually offer a slightly different perspective with travel videos. But anyway, yeah, as I mentioning about Traverse, I had a chance to go to a cinema showing of a couple of travel YouTubers. And what I found really, really interesting was that everybody had their own style of travel videos. And then I showed mine. And actually what was amazing was the fact that there was one travel YouTuber in the room who actually said to me afterwards, like, oh, Joe, 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 you actually almost made me cry because you helped me remember why I traveled. And that's pretty much exactly what I was aiming for. I was hoping to inspire, to really create some kind of emotional response through my um, travel video. and. That to me was an amazing moment. I'm hoping to actually next year I'll have more of that type of feedback. To just move people to, with my travel films will be oh, just amazing. That is sort of the aim. If I can get people to actually do something with that emotion and, and to go somewhere because of my travel videos and just they've decided to do something that they wouldn't normally have done. And that would definitely make me really, really happy. And my last goal was to actually engage with the greater travel community. Um, so there's different communities I'm part of, but uh, including the London Documentary Network, which I help with the social media. And actually that's, that's the actual network that inspired me to become a video guy, actually. Uh, you can still see some of my videos and uh, I've been part of a team. Our biggest thing is to do doc in a day where we try and create documentary in 36 hours. But anyway, that's, that's a side thing. Um, my other communities I was being engaged with was I think the biggest one has got to be the tra Traverse community. The I didn't realise there were so many travel bloggers who wanted to get into video and it was actually really nice just to help other bloggers and give some feedback on how to do better videos and whatnot. I wouldn't say I'm the absolute top of my game but I'm definitely getting towards being competent at doing what I'm doing. So I'm hoping to do more of that type of stuff and just help other people. I truly believe this platform, creating video is for everybody and like I mentioned before there's still so much scope for people to do their own way of doing travel videos. So if you're watching this and you're not too sure about whether you should be doing a travel video, you should definitely pick up your smartphone and just start filming. And I think engaging the community is really, really important because even though I like to think I'm getting there from my competent standpoint, they can help you to improve what you're doing and you can help them improve what they're doing as well. And that kind of leads me into what I'm hoping to do next year in 2019 do more, go to more conferences, help other people. You should also check out Keyframe, which is a travel video conference, which is in Hamburg in late February. But also I'm going to be hosting a travel vlogging and storytelling uh, networking session at VidCon yeah. London, which is also in mid-February. So you should definitely check that out as well. I'm actually looking for other travel collaborators. So if you're listening to this and thinking, ah, oh, this guy has something that I really want to work with or whatnot, then definitely let me know in the descriptions. My Twitter is this way up. Love to talk to anybody about collaborating on interesting projects in the next year. And um, hopefully uh, that will lead me into some interesting commercial projects. I've um, been talking to the bigger community, you know, tourist boards and a couple other uh, agencies that hopefully can sponsor some of my short videos. And with a bit of luck, they're going to come through. Going to WTM actually yeah, was pretty epic. But WTM has definitely been one of my highlights. That conference was absolutely epic. Actually, one of the reasons why I'm going to be focusing on predominantly the UK market is because there's, turns out, loads of people who go to the heritage sites who are, who are from the UK, but they don't necessarily know how to do it, where to go. It turns out you don't need to go too far to have an amazing travel experience because sometimes it's just right on your doorstep. I must admit though, this year, I haven't traveled as much as I did a couple of years ago. I haven't done an epic big trip. I have been doing like a smaller, smaller trips, like, you know, long weekend breaks or a trip that lasts a week or two. Hopefully next year I'll be doing a couple of, doing more of that type of thing. Um, since I'm going to be working on the video production business at, uh, in London, I probably won't be able to afford to go to my long one month, two month or three month trips anymore. 
But that doesn't mean I can't do some miniature explorations around Europe. So I'm just going to end this video with one of my favourite quotes at the moment. Great things never came from comfort zones by Neil Strauss. 2018 has been interesting doing some projects that I wouldn't have thought I'd be doing and it's been absolutely great and I'm slowly and surely coming making small small inroads and doing what I really want to do. I'm really really looking forward to share these projects coming in the new year and I hope it's been a great 2018 for my lovely audience. Thanks for joining me and watching this video. I hope 2019 will bring some amazing experiences and you're going to be progressing with whatever you're doing. Let me know if you want to like collaborate. Hey guys, happy new year and I'll see you in the next video in 2019.